We would now like to introduce our chamber singers.
Thank you, chamber singers. Good evening. Thank you all for coming. My name is Amanda Andreski. I'm this year's NHS president. I'd like to present my fellow officers this year. Vice president is Carolyn Yarmy. Stand up, Carolyn. Treasurer Mackenzie Miller. And, and secretary Caitlin Kiesel. Next year's officers will be President Jermaine Harrison, <laughs> Vice President Jeffrey Stalen, <laughs> Secretary Claire Hagland, <laughs> Treasurer Madeline Moore, <laughs> and Historian Elizabeth Bastian. I would now like to welcome Mr. Principal M Mr. Greening to the stage. Thank you, Amanda. Good evening, everybody. It's always uh, a humbling honor that I have to be at the NHS uh, induction ceremony for a lot of reasons. Um, it's always stunning to me to be in uh, a contact on a daily basis with so many talented students. Uh, if it's not singing, it's uh, service-oriented groups like NHS. So um, it's, like I say, always an honor to be here. Uh, some of you may be asking um, yourselves, didn't we just do this in the fall? And uh, after a lot of soul searching, we've made uh, a decision to move the NHS uh, ceremony to the spring, where it will always be yet another new tradition. Um, so you're part of history tonight. So I'm glad you made it. And uh, once again, welcome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, for parents out there, thank you for sharing uh, your children with us. Uh, it's, it's an honor every day, and it's especially fun on nights like tonight. So um, let's look forward to a really special evening, a lot of fun, and uh, I thank you again for coming. Thank you, Mr. Greening. I would now like to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Chisnell. Sweet dreams are made of these. I trust you'll stop me at 35 minutes. <laughs> My students know I'm not kidding. Can I tell you about a hunter? He was lost in the woods and he was getting desperate. He had no compass, nothing to, to find his way. He was starting to run short on food. For three days, three days he wandered and finally he stumbles into a camp. And he says to himself, oh my gosh, finally, finally I've discovered something. So he wanders into the camp and he's looking for someone else and sure enough there's another guy there. And he says, buddy, I can't believe I found you at last. You know, I've been lost for three days. The guy says, oh, hey, you know, don't get too excited, buddy. I've been lost for three weeks. Now, kind of a parable, because I want to talk about being lost tonight. See, I think we're all living under a few delusions. And before our seniors leave and before some of our sophomores and juniors uh, re receive an induction tonight, I think it's important that we free you of these delusions. I was recently called to speak to you all. I thought it would be a good idea to shake you up just a little bit and forgive me if I make you a bit uncomfortable. The first delusion I want to talk about then is that this belief that we have that somebody somewhere out there has the answers. Now I know how you feel. I mean, as lost as we sometimes believe ourselves to be, I mean, and I have to ask, how many appeals forms and hidden deadlines and senseless class assignments are we supposed to take anyway? <laughs> I'm a little afraid to ask what you're looking at there. But we believe that somewhere, somehow, someone can tell us what's really going on. And it has nothing to do with kitten snipers. Here's what's true. No one really knows what's going on. Oh, there are plenty of people who are going to give you advice. 
But they're just as lost as you or me. You know, I've been really fortunate over the past several years. I've met the Secretary General of the United Nations. I've met numerous ambassadors and senators, counselors and social workers, even the Dalai Lama. And I have to admit, this last guy, you know, you'd have to figure he's got some answers. But they usually involve something like transcending the real world, not engaging it. And for that reason, absolutely. <laughs> In the meantime, while we're waiting for the Dalai Lama to come back to Earth and tell us what's really going on, we have more appeals forums and class exercises. And in the adult world, these are replaced with bogus credit card deals, lost jobs, and uh, oh yeah, uh, more forms. Oh, even Ronald McDonald needs help. I have to say, nothing much really makes sense anymore. I mean, two cows are standing in a field, okay? And one says to the other, you know, moo. Oh, and actually, he, he talks. He says, say, what do you think about this mad cow disease I've been hearing so much about? And the other one says, what do I care? I'm a helicopter. <laughs> Had to scratch your head on that one, didn't you? Okay, I'm sorry. I think what I'm supposed to be doing is somehow inspiring you. But all I can think to do is offer you another delusion that most people suffer from. I mean, the world may not make much sense to us now, but here's the delusion. It's when I get a little older, I'll figure out what makes sense for me. Not right now. Oh, folks, the world changes. Really. I mean, one man's pet rock is another man's Tamagotchi. Destiny Cyrus is really Miley Ray, is really Hannah Montana, is really a has-been by Friday. Do you know, in second grade, I wanted to be just like George the janitor. By age 18, I planned to be a performance musician. For the last 20 years, I have been looking for the Soviet Union and velvet peanut butter, and they've both vanished on me. I'm still not sure what I want to be when I grow up. But I know this, tomorrow it's going to be something different. I mean, after all, who can keep up with a world like this? It reminds me of the snail, you know, the snail that was mugged. He was mugged by two turtles. And when the police asked him, you know, what happened, he said, I don't know, it all happened so fast. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was told to tell that one. <laughs> so, what's true? Sometimes we feel alone, often lost, confused, not knowing what to do, and we can expect no real answers from anyone. Pretty uplifting so far, isn't it? Cool. Just please, whatever happens, don't tell me I'm on Big Brother 11, but without the cameras. That's the last thing I want, but really, I am okay with this. Nothing in the world is settled, nothing is set, and as the world changes, so do its needs. You know, Ms. Irwin suggested to me that I talk to you about service tonight, one of the pillars of NHS, and I'm happy to do it because if I've discovered anything, folks, it's this. As much as I want to have someone tell me that what I should be doing, others around me feel like the same thing. They want someone to tell them. They're waiting for someone to find them too. Oh, listen, set all that stuff aside just for a minute. I have some forms I want you to fill out, and I have a state diploma requirement that, you know, that you'll complete. You know, I think community service would be great for high school diplomas. In fact, I need Obama to promise you an education if only you first join a domestic peace corps. Hey, look, if you give up your Saturday afternoon and work at the zoo and contribute to the Penny Wars, I'll give you extra credit. What's it going to get me? And if I do enough community service, hey, you and I both know it'll look good on the college resume and the scholarship application. So let's rack up some hours, shall we? It's rational, it's practical, it's utilitarian. We understand how the world works. My students, what can I tell you about service that you don't already know? And so, here's the last of the delusions that I want to talk about tonight. And that is that service is about exchange. We should never do anything nice if we don't know what we're going to get first in return. Think of it this way. Two armed robbers, they burst into a bank, right? They line the people up and they're gonna rob them one at one, taking their wallets and they start working down the line. Two friends, they're lined up, waiting their turn to be robbed. Suddenly, one of the guys thrusts something into the hand of the other. The guy says, hey, psst, what, what's that? 
His friend tells him, it's the 50 bucks I owe you. <laughs> That's the way the world works. Somewhere, somehow, there are billions of people out there waiting to be found by people just as lost as we are. Finding them, helping them, giving to them doesn't make us wealthy. It doesn't earn us credits. It doesn't make us any better. It just makes us human together. This is one of the reasons why Mr. Greening put a motto on our school this year, enter here to learn, go forth to serve. Now, for me, I don't think really that learning has much to do with algebra problems and appeals forms. I don't think learning has much to do with hallway passes and MME tests. That's scoring, that's filling in. Learning is a centuries old wisdom that finds its way all the way back to the Dalai Lama. When I was in Dharamsala, where His Holiness now lives, which is more or less a refugee city of Tibetans who will never return to their homeland, I visited a school of orphans. These kids lost their parents to arrests, to disease, or just a difficult trek across the foothills of the Himalayas to reach India. They were without money and with only the scarcest of support. I was brokenhearted when I met them. And I, you know, I, I'm walking along with some of the fellow teachers that I went with, and we're walking across the campus of this Tibetan children's village, is what they called it, and I yelled it loud because I saw something that was right across the property. I scared a few people with my yelling, but I pointed to a building, and there, in the backwaters of India, in the orphanage of a refugee city, was this inscription on a classroom building. They don't know their direction. They don't know who to count on. But they know what it is to be human. Perhaps there isn't a better reward than that. Are you entering tonight or are you going? The Swede Axel Munthe said, what you keep to yourself, you lose. And what you give to others, you keep forever. And of course, there's Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Alone and undirected, you and I, who are a bit better off than the orphans of Tibet, can do this much. No. We must do this much, not because it's a requirement, but because it's one of the only real things that we have. It can be in Galveston, or it can be in random gardens. It can be in Honduras, or it can be with the homeless. It can even be with that quiet guy across the hallway. You know the one I'm talking about. You see him every day, never talking to anyone and you're not talking to him. Find these people. Keep walking until you do. You know, next month, some of you know, I'll be traveling to Nepal to teach some of the poorest children on the planet. Despite everything, they're learning English, and they're desperately hungry to learn more. I'm going to give you an offer right here tonight. Write these kids a letter. Tell them who you are. Send a photo. Tell them about the worlds you live in, because the more they know about it, the more they can demand it of their new democracy, the more they can speak it. I'll make sure it gets to them. And who knows? Perhaps they will write you back. Perhaps you will find a friend on the other side of the world starting tonight. Find them. Keep walking until you do. Tomorrow, you're going to walk once again into Royal Oak High School, and you'll see your friends, and you'll suck up to, I mean, you'll say hello to your teachers, and your principal, I suppose, and you will mind your own business. Mind someone else's business tomorrow. Be unsure, but reach across that aisle to talk to someone else anyway. After all, there is no extra credit for this assignment. What better reason to do it? 
find them. Keep walking until you do. Or, as Alice asked the Cheshire Cat, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? Well, that depends a good deal on where you want to go, said the cat. Well, I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, added Alice as a way of explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that. If only you walk long enough. Thank you. Welcome to Royal Oak High School, and welcome to the first reduction induction ceremony of members of the National Honor Society. I'm Joe Butler, and Amy Lindsay and I are the committee co-chairs for these ceremonies. All students must have maintained a 3.3 GPA or higher, and have participated in at least nine semesters of activities with at least five semesters in school activities and the remaining semesters in community activities. All must have had excellent teacher recommendations, exhibiting leadership skills and outstanding citizenship. Once inducted, one-year members must, ha must complete 26 hours, and two-year members must complete at least 55 hours of community service. The current members are, of our chapter have completed a total of 5,134 hours of community service. Of that total, our graduating seniors have, over the past two years, completed 3,752 3 hours of service in and, ar and around our school, community, and in other states. Parents, family, and friends, we recognize that you have driven us to countless activities, helped us with our homework, and shown by example leadership and citizenship. Tonight, in the first part of our program, we will honor our seniors, who will become graduate members of our Royal Oak High School chapter of the National Society. The one lit candle in the middle represents the Royal Oak High School Society's torch, the symbol of the internal light of knowledge flanked by four unlit candles, representing scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Our officers through 2009-2010 will now light the four additional candles on stage. Scholarship means a commitment to learning. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended. For education, ends only with the end of life. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light which illuminates the future. Service is the willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or recognition. We are committed to the idea of volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. Leadership is taking the initiative in class and school activities. The real leader strives to train and aid others to attain the same objective. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. The last candle is character. Character is the product of constant action, daily striving to make the right choice. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, National Honor Society members hope to prove, by example, that they value character. Each senior will come forward as your name is read, and we will present each senior with your NHS cords and a candle that you will light one last time. Lindsay Anderson, Amanda Andreski, Michelle Avery, Jared Barrick, Melody Bemis, Kendra Bradley, Kevin Caverly, Amelia Clare, James Daniels, Philip Davis, Morgan Dean, Amanda DeGraff, Amanda DeVera, Hope Daco. Samuel Doyle, Gregory Ewing, Courtney Fall, Brandon Hogan, 
Tyler Howell, Benjamin Holbert, Andrew Hunter, Caitlin Kiesel, Benjamin Kimmel, Sarah Klein, Rebecca Kostacek, Jeffrey Korsik, Cassie Lama, Haley Landis, Michelle Landis, Matthew Luan, Ashley Lewis, Mackenzie Miller, Kelsey O'Keefe, Scott Olinsky, Jennifer Orletsky, Matthew Paradiso, Monica Peshkowska, Daniel Ramos, Jennifer Richardson, Megan Robb, Paige Swartz, Lauren Shempek, Austin Shave, Nathan Shave, Alexandria Schuert, Sarah Skoog, Michelle Smith, Rebecca Snay, Holly Salen, Elizabeth Stinson, Dudlin Sutherland, Kira Toll, Caitlin West, Abigail Williamson, Carolyn Yarmy, and Antonio Ziegler. Officers, please light all the candles of the seniors. May I present to you, one last time, the seniors of the class of 2009. <laughs> seniors, you may now extinguish your candles and return to your seats.
Now, will we be now we will begin our induction ceremony. Tonight, as students' names are announced, they will, proceed they will proceed across the stage to receive their membership certificate and candle. When all students' names have been announced, all members will read the National Honor Society Pledge together. After the reading of the pledge, the lighting of the candles will take place, and the group will officially be members of the Royal Oak High School chapter of the National Honor Society. We ask that you hold your applause till the end. Inductees for the class of 2010 are as follows. Samantha Allison, Ryan Beck, Matthew Clary, Devin Coates, Caroline Dippel, Jolyn Drulard, Max Hahn, Rebecca Hunsicker, Carissa Hutchinson, Ethan Hyde, Francis Lepowski, John Litwinovich, Bonnie Lowry, Olivia Nager, Brian Page, Amanda Patterson, Jenna Peltonen, Ryan Shuttle, Ian Semivan, Jacob Strakowski, Edmund Yura, Claire Valenti, and Austin Bateman. The inductees for the class of 2011 are as follows. Olivia Adams, Heather Bleeker, Ava Borquez, Colin Campbell, Hesiona Sello, Shannon Chesney, Andrew Cotter, Jeffrey Davis, Rebecca Dubicki, Amanda Flohn, Tyler Fleming, Joe Gordana, Madeline Grant, Hannah Heenan, Catherine Hubanks, Corey Jakubiak, Callie Lama, Melissa Lankin, Jennifer Larson, William Lianis, Sarah Luan, Anji Merpeza, Matthew Metzger, Sarah Mills, Kayla Niner, Dominic Notarantonio, Zachary Pasikowski, Gina Saab, Alexandra Scully, Meta Stangy, Courtney Stockman, and Catherine Vichy. New inductees, please join me in reading the NHS Pledge together. I pledge myself to hold scholarly habits, to engage in worthy service, and to be a leader in all things that prove myself worthy of my selection to the National Honor Society, and to make its ideals the ideals of our school and of my life. Our members, officers, please light the candles of new National Honor Society members. Please welcome all new and active and honorary members into the National Honor Society. Our ceremony is now over. Please extinguish your candles. New members, please return your candles to the baskets and pick up your certificates in the hallway. Thank you everyone for coming and we'd like to invite you to join us for refreshments in the lobby before driving home safely.